Good morning there, DBF family. Today we're back on Paul's CR500, and when we left off, we just got the motor installed, got the engine built, got the motor installed, and started doing ignition and stuff like that. Run into some problems with uh, getting some parts here to fire this thing, so while I'm waiting for those parts, I figure today is a good time to work on the fuel tank. Just so you guys know kind of how this whole project has been, there's been, I don't know, so much about just cleaning and restoring parts. Uh, this fuel tank is no different. I mean, this thing's a 2006. It's been in the dirt its entire life. It's got a lot of issues cosmetically. So let me show you this tank and let me show you the process on about how I'm gonna go ahead and restore the plastic on this tank. Okay, so as you can see, I've already done some sanding on this side. So for some reason, there's a whole bunch of, almost looks like old epoxy, that was on each corner right here of this tank. And man, I've chiseled, I've pried, I've done whatever, trying to get this off. Um, and pretty much what I've come up to is it needs to be sanded off. And there's a bunch of scratches along the side here and along the bottom. Now, not all of this is exposed, but parts of it are. So we'll get them cleaned up the best we can. And uh, because, you know, that's a functional tank. We've already molded the bottom of it, except the 500 motor. So we're going to use this tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet sand all of this garbage off of here and all the scratches. And I'm going to work my way from 600 grit, 800 grit, 1000 grit. And then I will actually polish it with a polishing wheel and compound. And then we'll coat this with some cleaner and it'll look good as new. So. kind of the results of the uh, first grit 600 grit sandpaper and there's a couple spots where I hit it with the uh, 800 so now I'm going to move on to 1000 might even hit it with 1200 and then we'll polish this thing out a little bit with a buffing wheel and uh, I think it'll be good there's a couple spots where you know the the gouge is really deep and it's just there's not that much material to sand it out but all in all Majority of this will be covered by the new plastics. These are not the new plastic. Pretty much majority of it will be covered, so you won't see much of it, kind of like that. And then the seat will come up into here. So, like I said, won't see a lot of it, but try to get it as good as we can possibly get it with what we have. So, more sanding. Well, there you go. That's looking pretty dang nice if you ask me. That'll look awesome with some new red plastics on it. So with the combination of uh, you know, shark hide polish, the same stuff we use on the frame, combination of that and the uh, plastic, basically this is a headlight restorer jeweler's rouge um, and the buffing wheel, sandpaper. It's got a pretty good shine to it. So I'll keep plugging away at this, get the majority of it out. Like I said, can't get all of it out because it's pretty deep in those in the plastic. So we'll get that finished up and get it thrown on the bike. Well, turned out pretty good, I'd say. All shiny and black and what have you. Like I said, most of it's gonna be covered by new plastic, so is what it is. But I like it. So now I'm gonna move on to radiators. I'm gonna get radiators bolted on and all the hoses and plumbing and whatnot put on. So when I get my kill switch, I can wire that in and get the uh, wiring tied up and out of the way and sanitary, do fuel lines, and we'll get this thing fired up. So 
Radiators and hoses are all installed. Uh, now it's on to the expansion chamber pipe exhaust system. One little tip if you guys are CR500 guys, um, in order to make this manifold seal to the exhaust pipe, there's one trick you can do. A lot of people take and put silicone on there, but I wouldn't recommend that because that doesn't let the pipe move from the vibrations from the motor. So it's what you do is you bolt this side right here to the cylinder, just like it's supposed to. And then you take the factory exhaust gaskets and double those up and then double them up right here. The exhaust pipe slides onto here and gives you a nice tight seal without any leaking and it still gives it some room to wiggle around. So never use silicone on these, just use the double gasket technique. Just like that. Slide it over the second one, or the first one. Bam, there you go. It'll never leak from there if you go with this route on a CR500. As long as your pipe that goes over this right here, as long as that is in healthy shape and cleaned up, you will never have a leak when that's firmly pressed in. So pretty easy, simple trick, one I learned years ago. Tight fit. Yahtzee. Sweet. Hey, it still all fits. It's amazing. Cool. Good morning there, DBF family. So on today's agenda, we are back on Paul's and we're gonna get the fuel tank installed on the bike and plumbed. But first thing we gotta do is we gotta rebuild some things that go along with that. So let's get going. So first thing we got going on here is we've gotta rebuild the fuel valve that mounts to the frame that lets the fuel from the tank into the carburetor. And then we've gotta pull the spigot off the bottom of the tank, replace that O-ring, and I have the factory Honda 450 hoses, bought brand new ones because the old ones were pretty hard and crusty and these ones are nice and soft and pliable. And for the fuel valve, what we're gonna use is this All Balls Racing Kit. So let's get going and get this thing rebuilt. Now you see that right there? That little rubber O-ring grommet? That's what goes bad and causes these to either bypass fuel where the valve doesn't work and it won't shut off, or a lot of the times they'll actually leak externally out of the actual valve itself. So this kit comes with everything you need, um, comes with um, new O-ring gaskets, new springs, new gaskets, new retainers, screws and everything. So all you need is the inner housing, in the outer housing. So I'm gonna go over to the buffing wheel, get these cleaned up, and we'll rebuild this thing. Cool, off and on valve, perfect. See that O-ring right there? See how flat that thing is? The little bugger will get hard and brittle, and crack, and then you'll have a fuel leak out of the bottom of your tank. So, got a new O-ring for it, slap that thing in. Shouldn't have any fuel leaks. That's a plus. Look how flat this one is versus how more round that one is. That will definitely cause a fuel leak. So 
Take the new O-ring, slide over the intake filter, put that in there like that, and that right there retains everything in place. Pretty simple. All right guys, so you guys have a loved one in your life that's kind of hard to shop for. Man, have I got a deal for you. So, the little basket. So, you can go on their website and you can custom make any basket that you want. Like for instance, this one right here, old timer pocket knife. It's got a pair of America socks on it, wallet, coffee, jerky. What man doesn't like jerky and trail mix? You know, for the girl stuff, it's got these lemon scones, lotions, teas, you know, all kinds of fun girly stuff that, you know, if you're a girl, you'd probably like this stuff. So go in to their website. You can customize any basket that you want, or you can buy what they already have pre-made um, for men, women, the special person in your life. These are a great gift for Father's Day, Mother's Day, uh, birthdays, anything that you want, you know even like as far as like baby showers and stuff like that. They can build anything that you need. Um, I'm gonna put the link down in the description uh, for till the end of the month. They are doing a promo code that is DBFGIFT23 for 10% off. Um, like I said, that's till the end of the month. You guys have someone in your life that you wanna buy something for that's hard to shop? There's your answer. So one more thing I gotta do before we uh, slap the tank on Paul's bike is on the kill switch see that right there you know make it not runner button uh it's not long enough so if you got to remember that the ignition system on the factory cr500 was closer up towards the neck it is now clear back down closer to the carburetor so the only wires i really have to extend are these two wires that go from the kill switch back down to the ignition system. So how I'm gonna do that is just extend the wires. But there's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually use solder and solder them together, which is a great way, and then heat shrink over the top of them. The way I like to do them is with these non-insulated crimpers, or actually like butt connectors almost, but they're non-insulated. Um, and then after I get them crimped on there, I'll take some of this uh, four to one, really nice soft heat shrink. It doesn't turn like all plasticky once it gets heated up and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And before anybody says, oh, you can buy, you know, butt connectors that have the heat shrink and the solder already inside of them. Those things suck. They're, I don't like them. So I'm gonna go this route and this is how I'm gonna do it. So this is how it's gonna be done. See, that looks pretty good. Now all I gotta do is just put the ends back on it, figure out the length it needs to be, and we're pretty much there. Permanent fix. Well, She's ready to go. I, uh, get rid of that. It's pretty exciting. So I messed up, got the wrong fuel lines. They're on order, they'll be here. But for the time being, I just, uh, so for the time being, just went and got some, you know, regular old Gates 5 16 fuel hose through on it. It'll work for now. I wanna get this thing fired up and get the, uh, the break-in cycles going on this motor, so. I'm gonna throw some fluids in this thing. I'm gonna put straight water in the cooling system for now because I wanna flush the system out anyhow. Uh, since we did so much modification on the radiators and you know, I don't wanna have to have any garbage in the good antifreeze when I put it in. But went and got some fuel, we'll put some transmission oil in it and roll this thing out, see if it'll make fire. Drink up, little fella. Oh, she's full. No leaking out the bottom. That's a good sign. Nothing but the best, you know. Crystal Springs Mountain bottled water, triple filtered from the mountains of somewhere cool. Just kidding. It's right out of the hose. 
This is what you call the two-stroke pre-mix shuffle. Kind of a little dance thing. If you know, you know. What I run for two-stroke oil is Maxima 927. Uh, mix this one just a little bit heavy on the oil side in the ball loop. Uh, mix this on the oil, a little heavy on the oil side. This is at 36 to 1. Uh, when it's all said and done, after the break in, we'll mix it about 40, 42 to 1. That seems to be for our elevation. The jetting on this seems to make them where it's happy. I want just a touch more oil in this for the break in period, just for that little bit of extra protection. So. We go ahead, get some petrol dumped in this thing, and get to kicking. See if she'll light. Now this right here is how you can tell if you work on CR500s, you have one single right hand riding boot. Throw this thing on so I can make, so I'm able to kick this thing over. So don't break my foot. Besides, it's fairly stylish with one boot. Kind of like a young Michael Jackson-ish. Okay, old girl. See if you'll like it for me. Get some fuel in it. Oh man, I'm pretty stoked with that. That thing fired up pretty good. I mean, considering the piston and the cylinder and all the internals were, you know, had quite a bit of oil on top of it. <coughs> I'm sorry, still got a cough. But uh, yeah, that thing sounds really good. It's definitely on the rich side. Like I kind of figured it would be because lots of oil inside of it and break in and all that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the three, two, one break in process. So, that's the first of three. Start the thing up, let it idle basically, a little bit of throttle here and there until it reaches kind of an operating temperature. Let the thing sit, cool down completely, probably overnight. Do it again tomorrow, do it again the next day. So kind of a three day process. And then the second one, I'll go ride it around a little bit, kind of do a little bit of a, you know, a little bit half throttle, a little past half throttle, kind of a deal, do that twice. And the third time, go right it around, up to three quarter throttle, off, on, off, on, a little bit of the revs. And uh, after that, pistons will be, or the, excuse me, the rings will be seated to the cylinder. Uh, the cylinder will be broke in and piston will be heat treated, ready to go. Paul can give her hell. So pretty excited about that. Key is heat, cool, heat, cool, heat, cool. Let everything seat into place where it's supposed to go. Yeah, I'm stoked about that. So, next up, where we're at, I'm gonna put these new Polysports plastics on this thing. Now, I'm doing something just a little bit different on the front half of the uh, plastics. Let me show you what I got going on. 
All right, so what we got going on here is this is the original front fender that came with the Poly Sports kit. So 2006, 2005 CRF 450 front fender, original front fender. And this front fender is a, I believe it's a 2018 to current or around 22 CRF 450 front fender. I'm actually gonna install this fender on this 06, so it's gonna have a newer style front fender and number plate on this thing. Now, in order to do that, I actually bought this conversion bracket kit from Prime, and it comes with a new upper mount for the front number plate, and it comes with a metal plate as a template, so you can mark the mounting holes right here and drill those out and then it bolts up into the factory 2006 triple claps so let's get this thing unpackaged and see if we can get some holes drilled in it there you go like that see how those index inside of there take plug some holes done deal stay Beautiful. Boing. So I've decided I need to keep a balance of actually working on these bikes and going out and enjoying them. So tomorrow morning, we are gonna do that. We're gonna go out and go for dirt bike rides. So I've gotta go get that one right over there. I'm gonna take that 250. I'm gonna see if it's gonna fire up and ran. It's been so long since it's ran, it's almost starting to make me feel bad. So I'm gonna go see if it'll fire up. But on Paul's bike, we're down to seat cover. So tomorrow, that's what we'll do when I get home. All right, like I said, time for new seat cover for Paul's bike. Now, this has obviously been changed. This is not the factory seat cover. Um, 2006, as far as I know, did not have a factory O'Neill seat cover on it like this one is. So I'm hoping that the foam underneath, especially around the nose right here, is in good shape. So first step in removing the seat cover, Get all the staples pulled out of it so you can pull the cover off. Now, what I like to use is a combination of tools. Um, flat blade screwdriver works great. Good, you know, needle nose pliers. And then actually these little snap-on wire strippers right here have got these awesome little teeth on the end of them. Those things grab staples like crazy. So I'm gonna flip this thing over, start pulling staples out of this thing. It's gonna take forever, but that's what time lapse is for, right? Well, there's all the old crusty staples. Those babies are nasty. Really gross. Old seat cover. There's a new seat cover. But, you look here. That foam, for the most part, is in pretty decent shape. Got a little bit of a hole right there. And uh, whoever put the last cover on, they pull it too tight and pulled that back. So I've got to try to heat that up, relax the foam, and try to get that back into its uh, normal, normal resting place. Might even have to just trim it just a little bit, but that'll be fine. Uh, back's pretty good. Sides are really good. Um, Nothing a little bit of uh, maybe sitting out in the sun and warming up and like I said, just getting the foam to relax a little bit. So, actually looks pretty good. Uh, thought it was gonna be worse than it actually is. I'm gonna go set this thing out in the sun and kind of let it relax, let the heat from the sun because it's a nice day out there, kind of loosen things up and hopefully the front of that foam will kind of form back to where its natural state is. 
So I'm gonna go see if I can find my chunk of seat foam that I got kicking around just for this kind of stuff and cut it out, glue a new piece in, and I'll show you how to patch a, a hole in the foam and reshape it. So, went and found my donor foam. This is off of a, I think a Honda 70 that I have that I just changed the new seat, put a new seat on it because I wanted the taller seat. So, but I've kept it around just for this problem. As you can see, this one's got a big chunk taken out of it. I actually used this chunk to repair the seat on Jace's Flex 500 and it worked out great. So I'm gonna do the same similar uh, repair as I did to that one, to this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm just gonna roughly sketch this out, what I wanna cut out of it, cut the damage out of it. So I'm just gonna take the Sharpie and make a happy little square here, kinda of like that. And a happy little square, build us a happy little tree, you know mountains whatever you know i'm no artist but anyways take my razor blade i've got a new sharp razor blade and i'll take and i'll cut that out as square as possible take that piece transfer it to the good section of foam on this and cut this one a little bit longer so it sticks out past here and then we'll glue it in and i'll show you how to file it and shape it back to this foam where it doesn't leave any bumps and show up underneath the new seat cover. See, kind of like so. I'll take and flatten out the inside of that so it's square. Take that piece. Transfer over to that one, cut a section of it out that's a little bit taller than this one, glue it in, we'll shape it, be done. Kind of like cutting the cake out of the middle. <laughs> Trim that up to fit, glue it in. See, I'll glue that in, we'll take and trim that off, and I'll actually sand that down so it's the same profile as, as the old chunk, just like it never even happened. All right, so what I'm gonna use to glue the new foam into place is this 3M uh, trim adhesive. Uh, the stuff works really good. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. Uh, being in the automotive industry as a profession for years, I've used it a lot. So it's, don't cheap out, don't buy the cheap, you know, off-brand stuff. My opinion, buy, use the 3M stuff. A lot of people, they say, when you do this, you know, you can hot glue it in, but the hot glue doesn't stay pliable once it dries, or cools, I should say. So this is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take and put a little bit in here, let it tack. Spray all four sides and the bottom, set it in, let it set up, tack, should dry fairly quick, so shouldn't be too big a deal. Let's trim that down and shape it up. Now you're going to want to cut this a little bit tall so we have some room to sand it back down to meet the elevation. Oh yeah. In order to get that down to the same elevation as the original foam, I'm gonna take this gray or this uh, brown rollock disc and lightly go over it. I'm not gonna force it, not gonna press hard, just gonna let the tool do the work and get it down a little bit closer. And then I'll actually hand sand it with actual sandpaper and a sanding block. So let's get going with this. And this is gonna go really fast, so like I said, you don't have to press at all. Okay, there you go, not bad. 
That'll never show underneath that cover. Pretty happy with that. Pretty much the same foam density as this one. Can't beat it. She's grippy. Grippy for sure. So this thing has turned out so good. I'm waiting on Sean from Dirt Rider Designs to get the graphics wrapped up on this thing. They're, they're gonna be awesome, trust me. They're gonna be like the, I don't know, not even the icing on the cake. They're gonna be the candles on top of the icing on top of the cake. But uh, got a few things to wrap up this week, small things here and there, finished doing the break-in cycles on this bike. But next time you guys see this bike, we're gonna take Paul we're gonna go surprise him with it and we're gonna go for dirt bike rides. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. And as always, thanks for watching, appreciate you.